So you'd like to shoot better portraits and you don't know if you need this or you can get away with this. Well, in this video, I'm gonna cover everything from 16 millimeters all the way to 200 millimeters and it will give you an idea of what kind of lens you should buy next. This is for everybody and it's gonna start right now. <laughs> Hey, my name is Sean Seymour and I own a photography studio in Sacramento, California. And one of the things that I do here is I shoot portraits. I shoot portraits indoors in the studio and I shoot portraits outside. One of the frustrations I have whenever I'm doing some research on what kind of gear to get is who do I believe? Who actually has practical experience using the gear that I'm trying to buy? So should you buy the 50 millimeter pancake? No, no this is not a pancake, this is a nifty 50. Should you buy the 50 Nifty 50 for $125? Or should you start getting better lenses, 85 millimeter lens, 1.4? That's what I'm gonna answer here in this video. I'm gonna go from 16 millimeters and show you what happens to someone's face at 16 millimeters, all the way through to 200 millimeters. And I'll show you what happens to someone's face at 200 millimeters. There'll be examples along the way, and I'll have some comments for you about what I think while I'm showing you those examples. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the example of what you can get with a 50 millimeter lens, 1.8, and on Amazon, it's $125. So let's get started with the 16 millimeter. What are 16 millimeter lenses good for? A 16 millimeter lens is great for creating some artistic looking photographs. It's used a lot of times to exaggerate emotion and feelings and <laughs> Believe it or not, it's going to grossly exaggerate whatever is closest to the lens. So if I put my hand up here, my hand compared to my face looks gigantic versus where my hand is now on my face, it's a little bit more proportional. A 16 millimeter, 24 millimeter, and in, in, in that wide angle range, that's a range where a lot of street photographers love to use those lenses and those focal lengths because it gives a little bit more of an environmental impact now here's the cons of a 16 millimeter lens. One, <laughs> we already talked about it as a positive, it's also a negative. It grossly distorts anything that's close to the lens. The other thing that a wide angle lens does is it also is more susceptible to being tilted or level, having that cause problems with the lines in the photograph. So if you were to tilt your wide angle lens, you would suddenly see that your lines in your photograph would start turning into weird angles. The last thing about wide angle lenses, especially in the 16 millimeter area, is that they are not very good for people that want traditional portraits. As you get closer to the lens, it starts exaggerating things like the nose, the chin, the eyes. The eyes go wider, the nose gets bigger. Sarah was kind enough to let us go ahead and do these images of her completely unedited so that you can see exactly what the difference is. So we're gonna show each one of these images each time on each focal length. Here's the 16 millimeter lens and you can see that it's definitely exaggerated her nose. Don't put your 16 millimeter lens in your bag and then just say, nope, that's not. I can't shoot with that, that's not a portrait lens. It absolutely can be, and if you learn how to use it, you can get some really stunning images. Let's move on to a 35 millimeter focal length. The 35 millimeter, especially in the 1.4, is something that you'll see a lot of commercial photographers grab out of their bag as their first option. And the reason for that is because it can be used really well for environmental portraits. A person in a scene and you don't have a lot of distortion on that person as long as you're not up close to them, okay? So a 35 millimeter lens is a lot of times exactly what you see in some of these advertisements. Another pro of the 35 millimeter lens is that if you have a crop sensor, APS-C, it's essentially a 50 millimeter lens. But whatever you do, don't leave the 35 millimeter in your bag thinking that it's not a good portrait lens. Come on, Sean. Pull it together, buddy. <laughs> I own a 50 millimeter lens, but to make things easy, I'm gonna use this 24 to 105 zoom lens. It's an F4, so we're not gonna worry about the background being blurry or not. I just wanna show you whether or not there's any distortion in the 50 millimeter focal length. So we'll go ahead and we'll use this lens for 50 and 105, and then we'll switch over to the longer lenses. So at 50 millimeters, this is, 
this is what people generally see from their own eyes and it can be very pleasing. The one thing about a 50 millimeter lens is if you wanna fill the whole frame with someone's head, you have to get closer. By getting closer, now you're suddenly distorting things and their face starts doing funny stuff. So a 50 millimeter lens is really not a great lens if you want to shoot something that actually fills the whole frame with just the person's head. It's a great lens for shooting three quarter or full body shots. Keep that in mind that a 50 millimeter lens, while it's what we see naturally, it does distort if you get closer to the subject trying to fill the frame with their head or their shoulders up or whatever. Other than that, a 50 millimeter lens is a great place to start for beginning photographers. As I mentioned earlier, this one is $125 on Amazon. I'm gonna show you some pictures of that here at the end of the video. Here I'm shooting at the 50 millimeter focal length and you can see that Sarah's lost a lot of the distortion of the earlier wide angle lenses, but it's still, in my opinion, still not quite there. When I'm in the studio, I'm gonna use this 24 to 105 because I love the reach that it has and I am in love with the 105 focal length for portraits. I think it actually does just enough compression to people's faces and it keeps you within the right distance from your subject. So I use the 105 all the time. Here's what the 105 looks like. So what are the cons of a 105? In my mind, Canon doesn't have one. I would love to see a 105 focal length and a prime from Canon, but that's probably not gonna happen because Nikon got there first. Betty, 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 Betty. Oh, Betty. There you go, Betty looks good on this side. So the 135 focal length is going to compress people a little bit more. Their facial features will be more compressed. You're definitely gonna notice that their eyes are gonna come closer together. The bridge of their nose will not be as wide. Most people immediately jump into this lens right here, which is 70 to 200 f 2.8. It's got a very shallow depth of field. It has image stabilization on it, and it's just a great lens all around. One of the things to note about this lens, though, is it doesn't have a lot of leeway when it comes to focus. If you run this thing at 2.8, better know that it's going to be out of focus on a lot of pictures, and so you need to shoot a lot of pictures. Nobody that I know of hits focus 100% of the time. And because you're reaching out so far out in front of you and there's such a shallow depth of field at that range, any slight movement of the lens or the camera or any slight forward and backwards movement from the photographer or your subject and you're going to be out of focus. While it takes tack sharp images, I almost suggest backing it off to like a 3.5 rather than going full on wide open f2.8 because that gives you just that little bit of leeway you need in order to get this thing sharp and in focus. The further you get away from your subject, the further you get away from your model, the less you can connect with them. So if you haven't worked with these people before and you're trying to develop some rapport and you're trying to keep the jokes going, you're trying to keep it upbeat and everything else, and they have never had pictures done and so they're nervous, when you step out away from them, it becomes obvious that you can't talk to them without yelling at them. and they can't say anything back to you. Keep that in mind if you're gonna get the 70 to 200 millimeter lens because it does a great job of being tack sharp and of giving you a longer reach, but it also puts more distance between you and your subject. I personally don't shoot this lens anymore when I'm out shooting portraits because it takes me too far away from my subject. So shooting at the 135, now you can see Sarah's face at 135 and you can see that we're actually compressing her face even further. Now that's also the lens that I would would use if I was shooting at 200 millimeters. What are the things about 200 millimeters? It's great for separating your background. This lens allows you to move as a photographer. I can move just an inch or two one side or the other and completely eliminate some distractions that may be going on in the background. And this is the last step in the journey to 200 millimeters. This is going to compress her face the most out of all of the lenses that we've chosen. I still think it's a nice look. I use the 70 to 200 a lot when I was shooting weddings. Thank the Lord I don't shoot weddings anymore. But if you're shooting weddings, this is a good lens to take a look at. Okay, so what is my go-to lens? Assuming that I'm not going to shoot an environmental portrait, I'm out shooting a senior portrait, or I'm out shooting business portrait, or something along those lines. The lens that I almost invariably always reach for when I'm shooting outdoors is the 85 millimeter 1.4. As I mentioned earlier, when I'm in the studio, I will go to the 24 to 105 because I like having the flexibility of 
being able to zoom in and zoom out. I control the lighting in the studio. I control the background in the studio. So I really don't need all the features that this lens right here offers. The reason I go for the 85 1.4 is because this thing is by far the sharpest lens that I've ever used. It has an image stabilization and at 1.4, I literally can remove any background that I want. I think this lens at 85 millimeters best represents someone's face. 85 millimeter focal length will also allow you to fill the frame with someone's face without distorting any of their facial features, like the 50 millimeter. I also feel like this lens has way more versatility as far as lighting conditions. If I'm in a low light situation, I can go and open this thing wide up. If I have a really well lit situation, let's say I'm full sunlight outdoors, I can either adjust my shutter speed or I can stop down on this lens. And I feel like this lens right here creates a perfect distance between you and your subject. You're not so close that you're making them nervous and uncomfortable and kind of awkward photographer dude. Oh, I'm here taking a picture. You can actually get away from your subject a little bit, right? The only thing they have to get over is this gigantic eye that keeps looking at them, <laughs> right? That's a little intimidating at first, but I've got a couple of tricks for that. And that is shoot a lot of photographs and then show them what they're getting and they'll love it and you'll get to have some fun. The one thing about the 85 millimeter focal length is it's not very good for environmental portraits. It's really good at eliminating the background. It's not so good at having the background be part of the story of your image. The last thing I wanna say about the 85 1.4, and I know it's true for the 85 1.2, probably true for any of those lenses that are 1.4 and under. If you don't understand depth of field and you don't understand how to keep people's eyes in focus when you're using a shallow depth of field, you're going to ruin a ton of photographs and you'll be coming back going, man, that was the best shoot ever. Put everything on the computer. <coughs> you get some water, you choke a little bit and you look at the images and they're all out of focus or at least one eye's in focus. But because your subject's head was turned like this, the difference of those few millimeters between this eye and this eye means that this one's in focus and this one's not. Or maybe you didn't get your focus point correct. This one's in focus and this one's not. However it is, if you don't understand depth of field, you can take a look at my video over here. It goes through everything about depth of field. When you're holding this thing and you're comparing it against this one, it's almost silly, right? Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh, this thing's heavy. There's my nifty 50 and there's the 85. Look at the size difference between these lenses. Even if I take off the hood, Look at the size difference between those lenses right there. It's huge, right? And this is a smaller lens. This is a smaller version of the 1.2. Someone needs to clean his photography gear. This lens was filthy. And I wish Canon would do something about these stupid hoods. There's such a pain in the butt to get on and off. I've been doing it for years and I still can't get these hoods on right. So let's talk about the Nifty 50. What is cool about this lens? First of all, it's 50 millimeters. So like we talked about earlier, it's great for three quarters to full body. Don't get this lens right up in someone's face trying to fill the whole frame with their face because you're just gonna distort their face when you do that. Another nice thing about this lens is it's very small and easy to carry. It's easy to pack when you're traveling. As a beginner, you can practice your technique before you move on to more expensive lenses. And you can say to yourself, well, what worked and what didn't work? Well, I didn't get a very good shallow depth of field. Well, a more expensive lens would help that, but how's your focus? So there's a lot of things you can do as a beginning photographer with a 50 millimeter lens in trying to uh, work on your technique and get better as a photographer. The last pro of this lens is it's inexpensive. If you lose it, if it gets stolen, if you damage it, uh, go buy another one. You can get like 20 of these for the price of this one. They're great little travel lenses. They're great for <laughs> beating up or in situations where you don't want to put a more expensive lens on. And they're good for beginning photographers who are just starting out and want to learn how to hone in their technique of photography. Why wouldn't I get this lens? Because this lens is definitely softer. It does not have the same quality of glass that this big boy does. That's just the way it is. They say that this motor is silent. Don't believe them. This motor in this lens is not silent and it's actually very slow. So if you don't have sports action that you're trying to shoot or you can be patient with 
this thing focusing, it's a great lens. If you're doing video, know that if you put this thing in auto servo mode, trying to follow somebody's face or their eyes, you may hear that motor in the audio. So it's a it's a noisy motor. Don't read any other descriptions otherwise. It's a noisy motor and it's a slow motor. When you start getting into the faster lenses, they have something called a USM, which is an ultrasonic silent something. I don't remember exactly. Actually, it's ultrasonic autofocus motor. <laughs> Why it's called USM, I don't know. But anyway, these motors and these more expensive lenses are much faster and they are quiet. This one you can actually hear focusing when you're pushing your focus button. Do you have to spend a bunch of money on an 85 to start out or get good portraits? No, you don't. And right here you can see this photograph that I took of Sarah using the 50 millimeter lens, this $125 50 millimeter 1.8. Now let's say that you feel like $125 is well within your reach. You wanna get a little bit more creative and you don't wanna start at such a low grade. You can also get a 50 millimeter 1.4 and that is 100 and, or 350. $45 or 300, roughly $350 on Amazon. There's a link to it down below. That lens does have the USM motor and it does have a little bit more of a shallow depth of field and a little bit more flexibility when it comes to your focus because you don't always have to push it to absolute wide open. Sometimes it's good to step down a little bit. That might be a good starting point for you if you feel like this $125 version is a little bit too lo too low grade. Try out that 50 millimeter 1.4 for $350 and then work your way up to, you know, the $2000 version. Here's the one thing that I tell everybody that asks. When they ask me about photography gear, they ask me about photo equipment, they ask me what kind of lens should I use? I tell everybody, if you're going to be in photography for any length of time, don't waste your money on poor lenses. Spend your money on glass. Don't waste your money on bodies. Having the most fancy body in the world really doesn't matter. What matters is the glass. So if you have money to spend on photography, you might wanna consider that as part of your evaluation process. Do you buy the least expensive lens that you can find and shoot a bunch and then have to rebuy when you're ready to upgrade? Or do you buy a, an expensive lens or a reasonably expensive lens and hold on to that thing for 10 years? These lenses don't go away. Canon just switched bodies on everybody and what they did is they made an extender or an adapter, I should say, to fit these lenses with absolutely no loss of quality and no loss of functionality. And so now I can use my same lens on the brand new R5 that is coming out here shortly. So spend your money on lenses, don't spend your money on bodies. If you have to buy lenses, evaluate that as a lens that maybe you're gonna keep for 10 years and you're gonna use for that time. Hey, I hope you like this video, and if you wanna help out my channel, please punch that like button down below. That tells YouTube to show it to other people. If you wanna follow along with what I'm doing, you can subscribe to my channel, and if you want a notification when I release new videos, you can hit the bell notification down below. Until I see you on the next video, buy expensive glass, and keep it simple, my friend. So you wanna shoo sh <laughs> So you wanna shoo you. Shish -sh 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 Yes, you can shish -sh all you want to shish -sh <laughs> Good lord. Who shishes? Nobody shishes. Mm -hmm.